Hi, thank you for joining Real Tea by Dr. T. Today is going to be episode 9 of What Jesus Said, and I'm coming from Matthew chapter 9. It goes like this. Jesus climbed into a boat and went back across the lake to his own town. Some people brought to him a paralyzed man on a mat. Seeing their faith, Jesus said to the paralyzed man, Be encouraged, my child. Your sins are forgiven. But some of the teachers of religious law said to themselves, That's blasphemy. Does he think he's God? Jesus knew what they were thinking, so he asked them, Why do you have such evil thoughts in your hearts? Is it easier to say your sins are forgiven or stand up and walk? So I will prove to you that the Son of Man has the authority on earth to forgive sins. Then Jesus turned to the paralyzed man and said, Stand up, pick up your mat, and go home. And the man jumped up and went home. Fear swept through the crowd as they saw this happen, and they praised God for giving humans such authority. As Jesus was walking along, he saw a man named Matthew sitting at his tax collector's booth. Follow me and be my disciple, Jesus said to him. So Matthew got up and followed him. Later, Matthew invited Jesus and his disciples to his home as dinner guests, along with many tax collectors and other dis disreputable sinners. But when the Pharisees saw this, they asked his disciples, Why does your teacher eat with such scum? When Jesus heard this, he said, healthy people don't need a doctor, sick people do. Then he added, now go and learn the meaning of the scripture. I want you to show mercy, not offer sacrifices. For I have come to call not those who think they are righteous, but those who know they are sinners. One day the disciples joined, I'm sorry, one day the disciples of John the Baptist came to Jesus and asked him, Why don't your disciples fast like we do and the Pharisees do? Jesus replied, Do wedding guests mourn while celebrating with the groom? Of course not. But someday the groom will be taken away from them and then they will fast. Besides, who would patch old clothing with new cloth? For the new patch would shrink and rip away from the old cloth, leaving an even bigger tear than before. And no one puts new wine into old wine skins, for the old skins would burst from the pressure, spilling the wine and ruining the skins. New wine is stored in new wine skins so that both are preserved. As Jesus was saying this, the leader of a synagogue came and knelt before him. My daughter has just died, he said. But you can bring her back to life again if you just come and lay your hand on her. So Jesus and his disciples got up and went with him. Just then a woman who had suffered 12 years with constant bleeding came up behind him. She touched the fringe of his robe for she thought, If I can just touch his robe, I will be healed. Jesus turned around and when he saw her, he said, Daughter, be encouraged. Your faith has made you well. And the woman was healed at that moment. When Jesus arrived at the official's home, he saw the noisy crowd and heard the funeral music. Get out, he told them. The girl isn't dead. She's only asleep. But the crowd laughed at him after the crowd was put outside. However, Jesus went in and took the girl by the hand and she stood up. The report of this miracle swept through the entire countryside. After Jesus left the girl's home, two blind men followed along behind him shouting, Son of David, have mercy on us. They went right into the house where he was staying and Jesus asked them, Do you believe I can make you see? Yes, Lord, they told him, we do. Then he touched their eyes and said, Because of your faith, it will happen. Then their eyes were open, and they could see. Jesus sternly warned them, Don't tell anyone about this. But instead, they went out and spread his fame all over the region. When they left, a demon-possessed man who couldn't speak was brought to Jesus. So, Jesus cast out the demon, and then the man began to speak. The crowds were amazed. Nothing like this has ever happened in Israel, they exclaimed. But the Pharisees said, he can cast out demons because he is empowered by the prince of demons. Hmm. 
Jesus traveled through all the towns and villages of that area, teaching in the synagogues and announcing the good news about the kingdom. And he healed every kind of disease and illness. When he saw the crowds, he had compassion on them because they were confused and helpless, like sheep without a shepherd. He said to his disciples, the harvest is great, but the workers are few. So pray to the Lord who is in charge of the harvest, ask him to send more workers into his fields. Now, I would like to go back for a moment to the part about the Pharisees questioning Jesus' authority and power that he had, assuming that he got his power from demons. There is a passage in scripture that specifically says when Jesus had mentioned, how can Satan cast out Satan, right? And it says, um, a house divided against itself cannot stand. So with that being said, what their interpretation or their assumption um, added up to was foolishness. It was no way that he could be the prince, okay, or be empowered by the prince of demons and cast out demons, okay, because remember, they work together. So, the enemy is not going to cast out the one he is connected to that works for his kingdom. Keep that in mind, all right? Now, with that being said, Please be mindful that when people do operate and such authority and demons do come out, it doesn't mean that the person that is actually operating authority has the power themselves. The power only comes through Jesus and Jesus alone. Do not get caught up into the messenger and look at the messenger and put them on the level of Jesus. It is Holy Spirit who can do the work in any situation. The person and vessel that is used is not the one doing the work, but only a vessel where the creator himself, the worker himself, the deliverer himself can actually get that done. All right? Please be mindful of that. So you never get it twisted. Give the glory to whom the glory belongs to, and it's always Jesus. All right? Because he's the one that came and died on the cross who fulfilled every bit of the law. In turn, he has every right to have all authority above any entity that was created by the Lord. I hope these words have found you well. And every time again... I teach this word or pretty much recite this word I do admonish you to seek the Lord for clarity for yourself and until the next time you listen to me God bless you enjoy your tea